On a typical year, I would probably argue that summer begins once June begins, after Memorial Day weekend, once the kids are out of school, and we start to get those summer activities going through the month of June. But this year has been an atypical year, and we had much needed beneficial rainfall through much of the spring, and spring weather really continued right up until the final day of spring, which is today. Summer kicks off tomorrow, marked by the summer solstice, so I thought we'd revisit what that means. It happens tomorrow at 314 in the morning, so if you're up that early, it's the point when it looks and appears like the sun just stands still. Of course, we won't be able to see the sun because it's 314 in the morning. So we'll pull up that live shot from Stonehenge. I think we have that now, don't we, directors? No, 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 that's a joke. We never had a live shot the from Stonehenge. Stonehenge the Stonehenge sky cam. Yeah, to check out the druids and what they're up to there. Uh, this happens because we get, well, we get all of our seasons because of the Earth's axis, the tilt of the Earth's axis at about 23.5 degrees. And so this is the maximum tilt of the North Pole toward the sun, which puts the sun's direct energy energy over the Tropic of Cancer at 23.5 degrees north of the equator. So this is just another way to look at the uh, the situation that unfolds tomorrow morning at 314. Now this is when our sun is at its strongest burning power and solar power. And we also have our longest amount of daylight, about 15 hours and 26 minutes of daylight, though it really only de decreases by a few seconds as we make our way toward the day after the first day of summer. But we will start to burn daylight very, very slowly as we cruise toward the fall equinox, which happens on September 22nd. We can cross that bridge once we get there, but this just gives you an idea of how much daylight is lost each month as we head toward winter. Of course, we've got a lot of summer ahead of us with it just starting tomorrow, but I also want to point this out as well. Now, that degree there, 23 degrees, is not a temperature. It's an angle. The angle of the sun's highest point above the horizon at solar noon during the winter solstice is only about 23 degrees above the horizon. It's kind of a filtered sunshine. It's a cooler sunshine, but then we get toward the summer solstice and it's about 70 degrees above the horizon, so a more direct spotlight and we're the star to enjoy that bright star in our sky. So the UV index tomorrow, it's at a 10. It's very high, almost at the top of the scale. Limit sun exposure between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. Slather on at least SPF 35. We are looking at a warmer pattern ahead of us. The Climate Prediction Center giving us at least a 40% chance of above average temperatures and also a likely drier pattern ahead of us as well with a favored chance for below average precipitation as we cruise toward the 4th of July. So there is our brief glimpse at what we might be in store for for Independence Day. But for the seven day forecast, once summer be begins, it looks a lot more summer like and you can always find the freshest forecast at KTVB.com. But I think for now, Doug, as I said last night, it's time to just put it in a cruise control.